Understanding cultural issues is very important in all aspects of international trade and investments, and lack of understanding of certain cultural and legal realities often threaten the viability of mega deals. The Caribbean's laid-back approach to work conflicts with the methodical approach of the Chinese. Jamaica and the wider Caribbean need Chinese investments and to their credit the Chinese are spending billions of dollars in the Caribbean effectively filling a vacuum left by traditional Western donor countries. However, some cracks are beginning to appear in this relationship, particularly surrounding certain soft skills associated with labor relations. Professor Denzel Williams, executive director of the Mona School of Business and Management, understands this very well. He spoke at a January 29, 2015 public forum dubbed Chinese Investment and Immigration. All the studies have shown that Jamaica has one of the great, well, one of the highest investment to GDP ratios in the world, but similarly has one of the lowest growth performance in the world. And you're, you're asking yourself the question, why is this so? And to try and probe a little bit further, what you will recognize is that sometimes it's not just the hard, cold, uh, you know, technical issues that are impeding us from achieving that level of productivity, but it has to do with really some of the softer issues. Those of you who are familiar with international business literature, there's a very nice book by one David Ricks and it calls 101 blunders of international business. And of those 101 things, maybe 99 have to do with softer issues such as cultural issues, cultural nuances. And it's in that context this evening why we want to have a discussion uh, about a conversation about how do we deal with these sorts of issues as we grapple with a global, uh, global economy where uh, investments are going to flow from different directions and they're going to come into your shores and you have to grapple with how do you actually sustain those investments and allow the spillovers to come to your economy to generate growth. It's clear that cultural issues can have a negative impact on investments. The Chinese have contributed immensely to Jamaica's economy in the sugar sector and infrastructural development in particular, spending over 600 million US dollars on the North-South Highway. However, from a labor perspective, the Chinese mega investments in Jamaica have not been without hiccups. Head of the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union, Senator Cavan Gale, who was a participant at the public forum on Chinese investments and immigration, highlighted some cracks in the Jamaican experience with the Chinese. The BITU and the National Workers Union had to write to the, a joint letter to the Ministry of Labor and Social Security raising concerns about the human resource management systems at China at Czech, the Chinese firm responsible for construction of these projects. And despite tremendous efforts, the trade unions have not been able to implement an agreement with the Chinese in the construction industry, which allows them to share representational rights on a peaceful basis on the sites. In fact, the unions have only been able to access workers on one Czech site in the Rio Grande Bridge in Portland. Czech, in fact, withdrew from the GIC rather than observe the rules. And this has been a matter of concern to the workers. But notwithstanding that, we have to change the realities, those issues that confront us. And in looking at some of the challenges, you have a lack of exposure on the part of many Chinese multinationals to the Western ways of operating. You have a distinct issue arising from the existing language barrier, the language barrier that threatens the culture of communication. There's a failure to acceptance of workers' rights. But one of the critical problems, because you may have recognized there are a lot of labor breakdowns recently on the highway. And you can't blame the unions because we're not in there. But one of the challenges is that there is the absence of human resource practitioners. And what it has been replaced with is liaison officers 
that have no human resource background but are more front for the political representatives. One of the other things is that Chinese tend to carry their culture and policies to the developing countries so locals are forced to adapt. But we have to change and we have to recognize these challenges because we want these investments in the Caribbean. We want these investments in Jamaica. And so we have to find ways to embark on strategies to incorporate these investments. One of the things I'd want to recommend is that we're going to have to invest in some people to learn Chinese. It is as broad as that. There's another thing in that the relationship between China and the Caribbean has been structured and an individual country to country basis. And these individuals countries have negotiated very little and mostly have been the recipient of what China has to offer. The money is attractive, yes. But we need to negotiate what I would recommend a CARICOM treaty of investment where those countries participating must come together and negotiate some type of treaty for continuity. I know there's a talk now about integration, but insofar as the investment is concerned, we have to find ways to hold it together. Caribbean countries must understand, and including Jamaica, that the Chinese investor expect to make a return on their investment efforts despite their willingness to offer loans and grants to support specific initiatives. And it must also be understood that the Chinese investment culture and work ethic is rigidly disciplined and is likely to be in conflict with a laid-back approach. And of course, the Caribbean workers' laid-back approach, as Senator Gale describes it, is a cultural shock to the Chinese and so regional countries while maintaining their sovereignty and democratic values have to find some common ground as the Chinese are filling a vacuum left by some Western donor countries. You're watching Your Wealth, the wealth creation and wealth retention feature within On A Personal Note. Hackers are the scourge of the information age and they are on the loose in Jamaica, having compromised several governmental and private sector websites and private citizens' credit card accounts. National Commercial Bank Group has been leading the initiative to educate the general public on how to avoid being hacked. NCB's Senior Assistant General Manager Strategy and Marketing, Nadine Matthews, reinforces the point. Even as we encourage you to migrate to alternate platforms for greater convenience and flexibility, we implore you to be vigilant in protecting yourself online from scams and predators. We have developed a robust technological framework, and this is not a static investment. We continue to invest to ensure that the infrastructure is robust and adaptable to the, the new schemes out there. Uh, this is in fact a global issue, but we recognize that it is becoming a lot more prevalent in our market. Um, and, and the primary one that we are being impacted by is, is phishing. And so phishing, the formal definition, is the impersonation of a legitimate entity or institution in an electronic communication in an attempt to acquire sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, credit card details in order to ultimately defraud the victim. These schemes often impersonate financial institutions, and so we want to make sure that you are um, armed in terms of recognizing these uh, emails so that you can ward against them and protect yourself. Please note, NCB will never ask for personal information in an email or ask you to click through a link to update any personal financial details. Under no circumstance should you respond to an email that requests 
financial information or personal information, so account numbers, TRN numbers, passwords, uh, irrespective of the source, you should not respond to those emails. Never log in to the bank's website through a link in an email. Always type in the URL yourself and never use a public network to access online banking. Timely warning there. Thank you, Nadine. And that's your wealth for this week. I'm Owen James. <laughs>